Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are gonna spend the afternoon in the kitchen. My whole goal was to spend all day in the kitchen, but it has been quite the morning. Last night, I turned my dishwasher on and all this water started coming up my sink. And I've been waiting for this day, today, to do all these preservation projects. We have so many preservation projects. I'll get into that in just a second after I tell you my plumbing saga. So Josh worked on trying to unplug this sink for two hours last night. Nothing was cutting it. So this morning at 7.30, I called the plumbers and by nine o'clock, they were here. There was a huge grease um, blockage, 25 feet worth of line grease just blocked. So do not put grease down your kitchen sink. Luckily, it wasn't anything we did and luckily, it wasn't anything Josh and I could fix. He put in his best effort and they were able to fix it. And then I went to go get ready because that was all done by about 11 o'clock. We got it working. I went to go get ready. I came out and there was water all over the floor <laughs> because the air gap for the dishwasher was not put back on. And I didn't know that that needed to be put back on. They didn't put it back on. So they came back out. It's all working now. It's almost one o'clock and we're just getting to it. So I'm excited. That was a little stressful. I am very grateful for a working sink and kitchen. All right, so let me show you what I have out here. We're gonna start with some easy things. I have so many things that need to be preserved. You have seen what has come out of the garden, what I've been buying from local farmers. First off, these peaches need to be dealt with. I think we're gonna make a couple canning peach recipes and I'm gonna make a peach dessert tonight for dinner. We have our tomatillos and jalapenos we grew. We're gonna make a hot sauce with these. And we're gonna use our homegrown onions and garlic. There's garlic in here as well. And that's what we're gonna use for the hot sauce. We're gonna start with the hot sauce because I need something easy to feel like I have a win under my belt because this morning was so, whew, got my adrenaline going. I am so grateful that we have a working kitchen again. So this is going to be a hot sauce, not a salsa verde. So we are gonna put a ton of peppers in here, but first I need to wash everything. I've been to the garden a few times since we were in it together and I've just been slowly collecting items so that I have enough in order to do a batch. But everything needs to be washed. Maybe, let's see. This is gonna be the first of a few different recipes for hot sauce we're gonna make this year. Since last time we were in the kitchen, I got these beef broths all canned up. I can show you how we did that. And then I also got all the freeze dryer stuff emptied. There's nothing in my freeze dryer, so I definitely wanna make sure we get the freeze dryer going. I need that freeze dryer going all the time right now because I need it working for me. I got out the liver kidneys the first batch from the freeze dryer. Orbit, get off there. I am now filling up my, well I have four, five quart jars in my electric pressure canner of broth. And I'm thinking I might freeze dry a gallon's worth of broth, I'm not sure yet. So I'm continuing to strain the beef broth into those and we'll figure out what we're gonna do. We got two gallons, or I don't know how big this is, but it's close to a gallon worth of dog treats. And I still have more in the freezer that needs to go in the freeze dryer, but the freeze dryer needs to thaw before I can put anything else in it. So these are gonna go on the pantry shelf and we're gonna wait a little bit before we refill it. It takes at least two hours for the freeze dryer to thaw before we then can reload it. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that today. My goal right now is just to take care of the projects I've already started, which is the freeze dried dog treats and then the broth it's going back there. And my sink is dirty. My dishwasher is dirty. We did a huge potato and onion harvest. I still need to go downstairs into the basement and take care of those potatoes. I need to get them um, drying slash curing. So I don't think I'm gonna start any other projects. I'm just gonna try to button up the projects we already have started. I have to say the electric pressure canner is the my favorite canning tool because I don't have to babysit it, unlike this one. It doesn't fit as many, it only fits five quarts as opposed to that one fits seven. But all I have to do is follow the buttons and I don't have to watch it. Just finished 
Now that we have the vent closed, it's gonna can for 25 minutes, and then it cools and it's all done. I don't have to watch it or anything. So easy, love this thing. I decided not to freeze dry this broth because I have a bunch of other freeze dry stuff that I want to get done with all the harvesting we've been doing over the weekend. So I have five more quart jars, which makes we got a total of 10 because there's five in this electric pressure canner right now. So as soon as this comes out, we'll put these ones in. I also picked off the meat from the bones and this is what we got. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and we will have beef tacos, stroganoff. I don't know what we're going to have, but we'll Basically, I have some pre-prepped meat so we can have some yummy food. Now, this is extremely concentrated broth. It's been going for two days. It is not necessary for your bone broth to go for two days. I just hadn't had a chance between yesterday and today because of all the harvesting we were doing to get to it. <laughs> it just sat in my roaster pan. Excuse the mess. Josh is working on uh, putting in the switches and lights and all the things. You know what I need? I need a compost bowl. Let me get one of those. I know we'll need a couple different stainless steel bowls for a couple different projects. So I'm just gonna bring a couple of those out. This one is going to be for compost. I find it easier to have a bowl just sitting out anytime I'm in the kitchen that I can put my compost in so that I'm not running back and forth to the garbage can. Uh, I try not to throw any anything that's compostable. I try not to throw it away, but if I just have a bowl out, I got that tip from Rachel Ray, and I really, I think it works really well. So we're gonna get all of this in here prepped, and then we're gonna get this simmering on the stove. I'm gonna wash these peppers and tomatillos really, really well. I know that I have to, have to, have to get to the peaches today, but that's going to take me a little bit longer to get that project started and done. So I thought, you know what, let's, let's do something easy and that's why we're doing the hot sauce. While I wash everything, I'm also going to wash my onions. These onions are pretty dirty. I harvested them when it was kind of moist, like the soil was moist, which is not the best time to harvest onions. So I want to make sure... I also get these really, really clean. Normally I save all my onion peels, but these onion peels are so thin and I make broth out of them and they're so dirty that I'm not gonna save them. We're just gonna compost them. The number one reason I got peaches is because we're gonna make a peach hot sauce using our sugar rush peaches that we grew together out in the garden. They're not ripe yet. So I know that I have to blanch, peel, and freeze some of those peaches just so that I can then make hot sauce when my peppers are ready. All I can tell you is that I'm really, really glad my dishwasher is working again. So we're gonna rinse these off and get any of that dirt off of them. I don't really want a bunch of water in that. How beautiful, this is all 100% homegrown. I am making this recipe up a little bit. It's roughly based off my cayenne pepper hot sauce recipe. I made this last year and I didn't bring you guys along. And it was my absolute favorite hot sauce I made. So we have our pot here that we're going to make the sauce in. And we're going to put our onions into the pot. So I'm not following an exact recipe. So. This is not technically an approved recipe, so I'm not gonna give you guys exact instructions or anything, but I'll just bring you along. These are Walla Walla onions, which are a really sweet onion. It's gonna add great flavor. I'm gonna put the tomatillos right in this pot hole. I don't need to cut them or chop them or do anything with them. Now, I like spice, so I am going to leave the seeds and the ribs in this hot sauce. Josh is not a fan of hot sauce. He does not like spice. So I don't need to worry about making it too spicy or anything because he probably won't eat this whether I make it spicy or not. He's not a big fan of hot sauce. So this is all I'm gonna do is roughly just cut them in, I don't know, about thirds and take the tops off. We have all of our peppers, prepped onions, and tomatillos in there. 
I didn't realize how much we actually had. We completely filled that entire pot, which is super awesome. So now we need to get the garlic in here. I have quite a few garlic heads in here and I'm going to put at least, I don't know, it's probably, we're gonna put all of this garlic into the pot. So I don't have to be perfect with peeling this garlic because we're going to be straining it. But I do want to get the majority of the peels out. I thought before I get this going, let's go ahead and get a pot on the stove boiling for our peaches. Because we need to blanch our peaches, I want to make sure that I have water ready to go when we are ready to do that. So one thing I love about this kitchen is this, well it's propane, not gas, but this propane stove, because let me tell you, it boils water so much faster than an electric stove does. So I'm gonna get the lid on this. Now we're gonna get the rest of our ingredients in our hot sauce. I am using my cayenne pepper hot sauce recipe and I'm adapting it and I'm quadrupling it. So we need to add sugar white distilled vinegar this is why i buy a lot of vinegar and keep it on hand because canning season you go through a lot of vinegar i'm going to turn the stove on here as well this is actually my last gallon of white distilled vinegar so i need to make sure i pick some more of that up Basically what you want is you want your vinegar to kind of come to the top of your ingredients, which mine just did. This is really, really full. Now we're gonna add salt. This is just for flavor. And you wanna make sure it's non-iodized. And that is all the ingredients for our hot sauce. What we're gonna do now is let this come to a simmer. And we're gonna simmer this hot sauce for at least 20 minutes. If you have asthma, just be warned, it's gonna get pretty fumey in here between the vinegar and the jalapenos. My mom suffers from asthma, and this is something that I could not do if she was over here today. So if you have that problem, it might be good to try to do this outside on a camp stove or something so you're not doing it in your house. Just a little heads up on that. I still have no idea what we're doing with these peaches, but I know that they need to be peeled regardless of what we do with them. So all you have to do is take a paring knife, this is not the one I use with garlic, and you're just gonna put a little slit on the bottom end of each peach, just a little crisscross, and we're gonna put this in the boiling water. And we're going to boil these peaches for just about, I actually need to look it up, I think it's like a minute, and that is gonna make it really easy to peel these peaches. We went peach picking together, if you came along with my sister-in-law and I, and these peaches were ripe. They were really good eating. I've eaten a peach almost every day, but they weren't perfectly ripe that I had to deal with them right away. So it's actually been a week since we've been peach picking. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with these peaches. I know we're gonna make a dessert, but I can't decide if I wanna make a galette or if I wanna make ham pies and put those in the freezer. I kinda of think that that would be fun to do ham pies, but that's an extra step. You have to cook the filling before you make the pie versus a galette, you just use raw fruit. But then I could make smaller portions and we would be able to enjoy those throughout the winter because what sounds better, 
Oh, and I could use my vacuum sealer so they would stay really, really fresh. Hmm. We also need to blanch green beans today and get those in freezer bags. We're just gonna get as much done as we can because our day started a little bit later than anticipated. I decided we're gonna make peach hand pies. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I'm gonna use my pie crust recipe. We're still, oh, 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 we're boiling over. Our hot sauce is boiling, so I just turned it down to simmer. So I'm gonna use my pie crust recipe and I'm gonna make a two crusts. Actually, I'm gonna double the recipe, so we're gonna make four crusts. So we're gonna put five cups of sugar, uh, flour in our KitchenAid. And then we need to add butter. We're gonna add two cups of butter. This butter is frozen. It doesn't have to be frozen, but you want it really, really cold. I just happen to store my butter in the freezer, so it's almost always frozen. I've never doubled a recipe in a food processor before for pie crust, so I'm not exactly sure if it's a good idea or not, but we're gonna try it. We're still waiting on our water to boil to blanch our peaches, and we need our crust to chill in the fridge, so I thought this would be a good time to get this going. Into our flour, we need to add a little bit of sugar. And salt, don't forget salt. I forgot salt and pie crust once, and it had no flavor. I do always use salted butter too, even though most recipes say not to, I do. I don't know if this is all gonna fit in here. This may have been a bad idea. Ah, boiling again. My pot was boiling over, so I just skimmed off some of the vinegar. I have all the vegetables in here because I want those to cook down. And then when we go to blend it, I can just add this vinegar back into it. I need this vinegar to make it a safe canning recipe, so I'm not gonna discard it. I just needed to make more room in this pot for the vegetables and the boiling. Okay, let's try it. This was a bad idea. <laughs> oh man, sometimes when you try to save time, it ends up taking longer time in the end. So don't do what I did. Just do one recipe at a time. This is where I made my life a little bit more complicated. I want to get all this butter in there. Our water is boiling for blanching our peaches, but I'm gonna finish this crust so we can get it chilling in the fridge. So now we have the equivalent of four pie crusts in here, and we're gonna add about a cup of water. When I make pastry, I don't usually measure the water. I just put some ice water in a container and I slowly add it. You wanna use as little water as possible. We have our dough at a perfect consistency. And so what we're gonna do now is wrap it up so we can refrigerate it. Just have some plastic wrap. I don't know how much I'm going to end up making into pies. So I am going to divide this probably about half of it on here. I'm going to make this nor into a square. Normally I would make my pies into a round shape, but I want these hand pies to be rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pastry in a rectangle. So when I go to roll it out, Oh, there's an ice cube in there. I don't want that melting in my pastry. It will be easier to roll out into a triangle. Oh, there's another ice cube. Hopefully I found the only two that were in there. So 
I'm going to stick this in the fridge. I want that to chill for at least 30 minutes, which is fine because we have plenty of other things we can get to. I love having homemade pastry in the freezer or refrigerator. Mostly I keep it in the freezer because it's so easy when you have homemade just to make a quiche, make a pie, make ham pies, whatever it might be. It doesn't take that much more time to make two or three pie crust as it does to make one. So almost any time I make pie crust, I make extra because it's not, you know, most people's not favorite thing to make pastry and that's why we resort to buying store-bought pie crust. But if you just always have a few homemade in the freezer, you can whip up a chicken pot pie or whatever, whatever you want. And it can be homemade. You can control all the ingredients. I went to go, what year was it? A couple years ago, I was responsible for making pies for the family. And I was like, you know what? I don't need to make everything homemade. I'm gonna go buy pie crusts. And I decided to read the ingredients on store-bought pie crust. And there's artificial colors and flavors in pie crust. And I'm just not sure why that's necessary. When, if you make it with butter, flour, sugar, and a little bit of salt, it's absolutely delicious. No reason to add artificial colors or flavors to it. So I did go ahead and I decided, you know what, I think I'm gonna make my own. And ever since then, that's when I was like, I'm never making one pie crust. I'm always gonna make a couple extra, throw them in the freezer, and then I can whip them out and use them whenever I need to. Especially at the holidays, if you, you know, make a few at the beginning of November, they'll last in your fridge long enough to get through Thanksgiving and Christmas. So anyway, just an encouragement. Make two, not one. In the fridge it goes. I'm gonna clean up my mess. And now we get to blanch our peaches because it's definitely boiling and ready for us. Excuse me. We are going to blanch these peaches for 40 seconds. I'm glad I looked that up. Basically, we're doing the same thing we did when we blanched the corn. We're gonna drop them in here. This is a big pot, so I can do quite a few at one time. I'm gonna try to get half of them in here. I just stuck my hand in there. We're okay. Our goal is not to cook these peaches whatsoever. Our goal is literally just to shop the peach skin so that it wants to peel right off when we put it in cold water. Or that's the goal at least. I've always had mixed results with this, whether it works or not. Okay, I'm gonna take these out. I'm going to see if I can kinda, oh yeah, the peel's coming off, okay. I just have this bowl that I made the crust in. No need to dirty another dish. I think because I put so many peaches in here, I really dropped the temperature of this water because it's not technically boiling anymore. I think we'll be okay though. I have cold water right here. And I'm going to just put my peaches in this cold water. I'm gonna let those sit in there. That's gonna stop the cooking process. And that's gonna help with the peels come off. You can even see on this one, the peels are wanting to come right off. Looks like there was a little bit of a bruise on this one, so we'll just cut that bruise off. See how beautiful? And then we will give these peels to the chickens. So I'm gonna put our peach right here. We're gonna get some more peaches in the water to boil. Some of the peaches, half of the peel comes off really easily and then the other half is a little bit more stubborn. So I just take a parry knife and cut away any of the skin. But some of it just comes off absolutely easily. And if there's any bruise spots like right here, I'm just gonna cut that off. So we have only really, really nice, beautiful peach flesh. This is the last of the peaches going in the cold water. I think I need to put some more cold water in there. 
I have about halfway to go when it comes to peeling the peaches, but our hot sauce is done. I turned it off. It's been simmering for probably 30-ish minutes or so, so we need to go ahead and finish processing this, and we're gonna get it in a canner. I did put fresh water in here, so the blanching water from the peaches I went ahead and dumped out, and now I'm warming up some water to water back a can of hot sauce. I have my high-powered blender here. We're going to put our hot sauce into the blender. See if I can do this without making a mess. Let's do it like this. The tomatillos have completely broken down to nothing, which is what we want. Be very careful with this because this is hot. Very, 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 very hot. And then we're gonna blend it. You do not have to do this next step, but I like to do it. We're gonna strain our hot sauce. If you use a high powered blender, you're gonna get a lot more out of it, even if you strain it. Not sure why that just happened. It was going so well. So this is kind of the leftover pulpy stuff. You can dehydrate this and use it as seasoning if you want. I still have some leftover from last year, so I'm gonna compost this. This is mostly just the seeds from the tomatillos and the peppers and the skins. So again, we have our pulp here that I've strained out. Get all this off because this is all smooth, nice hot sauce. This is our hot sauce. It's a little bit on the thin side, so I'm actually going to cook this down a little bit on the stove to reduce it. You do not have to do this, but I want to do it. Look how beautiful that is. That is a beautiful green color. So back on the stove. I'm gonna let this simmer for probably 15, 20 minutes just while I finish peeling these peaches. Once these peaches are done, I'm gonna call that sauce done too. So then we can move on to the next step. Some of these peaches I'm definitely having to peel a little bit with the paring knife. Hot sauce is something I put on almost everything and my goal this year is to try to make 100% of my own hot sauce. Last year I made probably 80% of the hot sauce that I ate. And so I think this year we're gonna be able to get to that goal. Cause that's quite a bit of hot sauce there. We're gonna make our peach hot sauce and then I'm gonna make my cayenne hot sauce. That's just a really classic, delicious hot sauce. And I just, I'm so excited about this green hot sauce, the tomatillo hot sauce we're making right now because every single one of those items other than I guess the vinegar, salt and sugar are home grown. So that's a huge accomplishment right there. And hopefully all the ingredients when I make the peach one are going to be home grown and or locally sourced because these are from a farm that we went and picked these peaches at. So kind of fun. We got the peaches done. These are not the prettiest peaches I have ever peeled. Our hot sauce has thickened up a little bit and it will thicken as it cools. So we're going to get this in the jars and get it in the canner. I like to can my hot sauce in pints and half pints. I like to do different sizes so that if I gift it, I can gift different sizes depending on if I think someone's gonna really like it. <laughs> or I can make littler ones so I can gift a bunch of different ones. And they can kind of like have a sampler of the different hot sauces or jams or jellies that I make. 
Now we're gonna wipe down the rims of each one of our jars. You've heard me say it before, and I will say it again. This ensures you get a good seal. You also wanna feel for any nicks or dings that could be on the ridge of your jar. And now we're gonna put some a new candy lid on each one. I do have a discount code for these candy lids if you're interested. I can link them down below. We put on a ring, fingertip tight. This hot sauce is hot to the touch, very hot to the touch. So I have my water in my canner getting hot. You want the contents of your jars and the contents of the water. The jars are going in to be the same-ish temperature so your glass jars don't break. I have this amount that's left over. I'm going to put this in the fridge and I'm going to enjoy this this week. Now we need to get the hot sauce in the canner. It's very hot, not boiling, but hot. Once this comes up to a rolling boil, we are gonna have it boil for 25 minutes. And we were able to get all of these jars in this one canner load, which is awesome. You wanna make sure the water is covering the jars by at least one to two inches, which is what we have here. I'm gonna turn this stove up high and we're gonna get this boiling. Now we're gonna start taking care of some of these peaches. The first thing, I'm gonna do is bag up some peaches for the hot sauce. And I'm gonna go through and pick kind of like the, they're not bruised, but the ones that just, they were the most ripe. And they're not the prettiest peach. I'm gonna use these ones as the ones we're gonna make the hot sauce out of because it doesn't really matter what they look like. These are supposed to be freestone peaches, meaning the pit is supposed to come out nicely, but <laughs> clearly that wasn't the case with that one. And I'm just gonna put these peaches in a Ziploc bag in here, not fancy or anything, just in the bag, because this is gonna be cooked down into hot sauce, just like the other hot sauce was. And they're not wanting to come off the pit. I don't wanna cut my bag. Our hot sauce has come to a rolling boil, so I'm gonna set the timer for that. And I think that's probably enough peaches. I'm just gonna lay this flat and throw this in the freezer just like this. And then in probably three or four weeks or so, when my peppers are ripe, we'll pull this back out and we'll make hot sauce with it. Now in our pot, we made the hot sauce. I just rinsed it out really well. We're gonna cut these peaches and make it into the pie filling. I was gonna can some of these into canned peaches, but they're kind of not the prettiest peach now. And I don't think they're gonna look nice in the jar. All these peaches, the pit's not coming out. So I'm going to turn all of this into pie filling because it doesn't matter. I'm gonna chop them up anyway. So it doesn't matter what they look like. Kind of too bad. Because last year, they, I canned beautiful peaches. I have this much pie filling, which is a lot. And I thought if I am gonna make all of this into pie filling, that's way, way too much. They're not making beautiful, you know, peach rounds to can for peach, like to eat just peach slices. So what I'm gonna do is can baked oatmeal filling for Josh. I've talked about lots of times and showed how Josh loves baked oatmeal and I make it for him really regularly. And I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and cut some of these peaches up into dices. They don't have to be beautiful half peaches for you know a side dish or dessert or whatever it might be. They can just be rustic because they're gonna be end up baked in an oatmeal, and that way they won't take up freezer space. So that's what we're gonna do here. And a pint probably will be perfect to make one baked oatmeal because I do his baked oatmeal in nine by nines, and so that will be perfect. Sometimes when I put fruit in the freezer, it gets buried. So I'd rather it be on the shelf where I can see it in the downstairs walk-in pantry. Our timer just went off for the hot sauce. So what I like to do is turn my canner off or my stove off 
and then I take the lid off of it and I let it just sit for five to ten minutes that way the pressure in the jar and the pressure outside they can come to more of an equalized temperature and you're less likely to have siphoning so what we need to do now is we're going to can those peaches these beauties right here so I have my favorite canning book out and this is my absolute favorite canning resource my mom got this for me for my birthday I think seven years ago when I first started canning and I haven't needed any other canning book other than I really like to use my pressure canning manuals and I'm gonna can this in a simple syrup and I saw on what is her Instagram account I'm gonna look it up for you Ruth Ann Zim what she does when she cans her peaches instead of making going through the effort to make a whole simple syrup she just adds the sugar right into the jar that way you don't make a bunch of extra simple syrup and it dissolves when it's in the canning process I honestly don't know why I've never thought of this before I think it's genius the reason I'm going to sweeten these a little bit is I always do sweeten Josh's baked oatmeal a little bit and I'm going to use this whole thing liquid and all in his baked oatmeal and then I know I won't have to add any extra sweetener to the baked oatmeal this will be the sweetness the sugar is not necessary when you're canning peaches but it keeps the color really nice so I probably put about three tablespoons of sugar in each one of those and then I'm gonna fill the rest with the water and I do definitely need to debubble I fit about two peaches in each one of these jars. So this ring has dents in it. It's hard to see, but I probably did that. I don't know. So I don't want to use this one because it's not going to put nice, even pressure along the whole lid. So I'm going to toss this one and I'm going to get a new one. And these are going to water bath can for 25 minutes as well. I'm gonna let the hot sauce cool there for just a minute as well, and we're gonna get going on our peach filling. So in to our peaches, I'm gonna add some cinnamon. I'm gonna turn this on. Oh man, that cinnamon and peaches already smells divine. I'm just gonna turn that on kind of like a medium low. And then we're gonna add some sugar. I have to tell you, I've been loving keeping my measuring spoons in my containers it's a lot less to clean so we're gonna add sugar and then we're gonna add a little bit of flour to help thicken it and I just put my measuring spoon right back in there and I don't have to wash it I'm gonna mix that up we're gonna let this cook for a few minutes and kind of create a yummy filling oh I need to add some salt too you never ever ever want to forget to salt even sweet things if you cook a lot at home you don't need to worry about sodium intake as much it's really the processed foods that you purchase at the store the packaged foods that contain so much sodium and because we eat mostly homemade scratch made food I don't really worry about the salt content so what I'm gonna do is let this come up to a simmer and I'm gonna let the flour kind of do its job, thicken this a little bit. I'm gonna taste one of these peaches just to make sure we've got a good flavor profile. Oh my goodness. I can't taste the flour because that hasn't cooked yet. <laughs> but the peach, the little bit of salt and the cinnamon, match made in heaven. Now this canner is hot, very, very hot. And if I were to put these raw packed peaches that are room temperature into this hot canner, I could break my jars because there's such a temperature difference between this and that. So what I'm gonna do is pour out half of this water, fill it up with cold water, and then I could put the peaches into it and then bring the whole thing up to a boil. If I had hot packed these, meaning I heated the peaches up before I put them in the jars, 
then I could stick them right in here just like our hot sauce was hot when it went in the jars and then went into the hot water. If I wasn't, if it wasn't already five o'clock, I would probably just let this cool down so I don't waste this water. But I don't wanna be in the kitchen really, really late tonight. So we're gonna put cold water in here so that this water's just kind of warm. While I'm waiting for all this stuff on the stove, let me show you something that is pretty awesome. If you've been following the garden, my zucchinis, I've only gotten two because they got choked out by weeds. I've gotten quite a few yellow squash. And so my new neighbor, who I personally have not even met yet, gave me a huge bag of zucchini. And I am so excited about it because I was a little stressed that I wasn't gonna get my year's worth of zucchini. I did a second planting of zucchini and I don't know if I'm gonna get any zucchini from that second planting. So to say I'm blessed to have all of this zucchini show up on my doorstep is an understatement. I loved the freeze-dried zucchini. I got a half gallon of it. I've already used it uh, in making pasta sauce. I thickened up a pasta sauce. Instead of using tomato paste to thicken it up, I just threw in two handfuls of the shredded zucchini and it tasted delicious. And I'm just adding extra veg. So I'm really excited about it. So I do need to get these washed up. They do look like they're dirty. And a couple of them I'm gonna save to eat fresh. But a couple of them really, really need to be used up. So the ones that look the freshest, we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna stick these four back in the fridge in a bag. These green bags were a gift to me in my P.O. box from one of you, and I've been using them. They're called Debbie Meyer Green Bags. They keep produce so fresh for so long, and I'm just loving them. I can link them down below if I can find them. I think they came from Amazon in my P.O. box. So I'm gonna put these in here, and probably tomorrow night we'll have these for dinner. I have leftovers for dinner tonight. I'm not doing any cooking for dinner tonight. Put those in the crisper drawer and let's go ahead and process or wash up all of these beauties. I also have this big bowl of tomatoes. It's pretty big. And I need to deal with those once we deal with the zucchini. Some of them are still green and ripening in that bowl. I'm gonna freeze some of this as well. I wanna make sure I have both the frozen and the fresh, because the frozen is what I like to use for breads. I will try using the freeze-dried in breads and reconstituting it, but I just have a feeling I'm not gonna enjoy that as much, but I might really enjoy it. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. about the zucchini is you can kind of pile it high on these freeze dryer trays which is nice so I can get more in the freeze dryer I kind of tested that out last time and it worked just fine probably takes a little bit longer to do the freeze drying process but if I can get more in my freeze dryer I'm all about that so I don't have enough to freeze I am going to fill up these four freeze dryer trays perfectly so I will, if I get more zucchini later, I'll freeze it. But I wanna make sure when I run my freeze dryer that it's completely full. I just went down to the basement and got two onions. I have the freeze dryer cooling now, and then we can start it. But I did go ahead and put the trays in there. And in the meantime, I ran down to the basement and grabbed two onions because I'm gonna make a little bit of salsa for dinner tonight. Ah! I need to wash that real good. 
I'm trying to use these onions and tomatoes while they're nice and fresh because sadly these Walla Walla onions, they're sweet and delicious, but they have hardly any shelf life. With the leftovers meat from making that bone broth, I made some enchiladas and we still have leftovers for dinner that we can enjoy tonight. But I wanna make a really fresh, beautiful pico de gallo to go along with that. With these absolutely stunning tomatoes. I'm gonna dice these up just really, really small. I need to add a couple more ingredients to our salsa, but I have some tomatoes in here that I know I'm not gonna to get to before they go bad. So what I've been doing is just slowly putting them in my freezer so that when I have enough to process and can, I can do that. I don't do anything special. I just throw them in actually a Ziploc bag that I reuse. You could even throw them in a paper bag. The rest of these can ripen up a little bit, so I'm gonna put these back on the counter. Yeah, I'll let those go for a day or two longer. Let me put the rest of the ingredients in this. I have our homegrown garlic powder. So this is 100% homegrown except for the salt. The last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of lemon juice. And mix that up. I would add a bunch of cilantro, but I don't have any right now. I need to freeze dry some. That's a thing on my list to do. But I just haven't got to it yet. You know what I think I'm gonna add? Just a little bit of our hot sauce we just made. Not too much, just a little bit. We only have three more minutes on our peaches that are canning. I wanna give this a try. I grabbed a chip. Let's see how this tastes. Mm, 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 mm. I got a stem in there. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of our hot sauce to add a little bit more zing to it. And then I think what else I'm gonna add is a little bit more salt. We're gonna stir that in and see if that kind of brings it to the next level. This will be perfect over our leftover enchiladas. All right, let's give this a taste test. I hope I didn't make it too spicy for Josh. Those sweet onions though, delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put the lid on this. This is the coolest bowl ever. I love this thing. All right, our peaches are done, the ones for Josh. You're really not supposed to tip them over like that, but I have a hard time not tipping them. The reason why these are no longer completely filled, even though we've packed them pretty tight, is because we raw packed these. If we had cooked them for five minutes or so before putting them in the jar, we would be able to fill the whole jar. When you put raw fruit in a jar and then you can it, and it cooks in the canner, I don't know if it releases moisture or what happens, but it shrinks, and that's really normal, but that's fine because I'm gonna dump this whole thing in Josh's baked oatmeal. I'll use powdered milk and we'll use this peach syrup to turn it to sweeten the baked oatmeal and the liquid in this contents to make the milk. Another thing you can do with this, say you didn't want to use this for baked oatmeal, you were just using it for peaches or you did like half peaches or something. That is a peach symbol syrup, makes a fantastic cocktail. Now, <laughs> rereading the recipe for our peach pie filling. This needs to cool completely before we can make the pies out of it or it's going to warm up our pastry. And you never wanna warm your pastry up. You can see how thick it is. Because if you warm your pastry up, you're not gonna get it to be as flaky. It is already 5.45 and I have a feeling because I am tired, if I attempt to try to make all these hand pies right now, I'm gonna mess up. So if you wanna watch me assemble these hand pies, come back tomorrow 
and we will go ahead and do that. I've got the kitchen cleaned up. We have so much more food preservation we have to do. I have an entire, oh, we need to turn on our um, freeze dryer. So let's go do that. And I'm gonna show you all the things that need to be preserved up that are in this outside refrigerator. In here, now it's a mess, but we've got probably 30 cabbages, a ton of celery, a ton of peppers, a couple cucumbers I wanna turn into pickles, and this thing is full. This is where our peaches were right here. I also need to preserve some green beans that I didn't get to tonight. So this is now freeze drying. It has to cool for 15 minutes before you can freeze dry. So I can link a, my freeze dryer down in the description box if you're interested in a freeze dryer. The more I use that, oh my gosh, the more I love it. At first, I was, wasn't 100% sure about it. Now, wouldn't want to do preservation season without it. I, you can dehydrate zucchini in a dehydrator. I've done that before but it kind of cooks it and it's just a completely different texture and I really, really prefer the texture of the freeze dryer. So this peach filling is going in the refrigerator. We got a ton of stuff done. Thank you for hanging out with me. I will link the recipes if I can link the recipes and or the equipment we used to make these recipes down in the description box if you're interested. I hope you come back tomorrow to join us as we preserve up, oh, I didn't, I didn't even show you, but downstairs, We've got probably 100 or 200 pounds of potatoes we need to work on. I wanna freeze dry mashed potatoes. We have onions down there, garlic down there, so much stuff down there. And we gotta weigh all those potatoes. I still haven't weighed them yet. And we're gonna make dinner tomorrow. So I hope you come back to join me tomorrow in my kitchen. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. If you enjoyed this, I greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing or I can pop a couple more of my other videos right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Have a great night, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.